When my Chinese grandmother would babysit me as a little kid, she'd always try to teach me like traditional Chinese paper cutting and folding and stuff. But unfortunately, I did not inherit her skill or patience. And so one of the first things that I did when I got access to a laser cutter is cheat and cut it all with a laser. But today we're gonna be trying and taking that cheating, that was grammar, we're gonna take that cheating to another level. Lately, we've been wondering if it's possible to cheat your way through origami using lasers, especially on complicated tessellating patterns. We decided to do this by using our Dremel Digilab laser cutter, hashtag sponsored, thank you, to score the paper so that basically it makes the folds for us and in theory it'll be incredibly precise, or at least more precise than I can do. Like with any laser cut project, the first thing we need to do is design the file. That means finding the fold pattern for your design. If you want, you can make your own by designing a vector image of all the fold lines, or you can use one of the patterns we've linked down below. An easy way of designing a simple pattern yourself is to fold an initial shape and then scan the paper and trace the fold lines in CAD, at least to get the hang of it. Once you have the pattern ready, you'll probably need to do some test sheets to dial in the settings. The idea is pretty simple. The line is still going to be a vector cut line, but with the speed and power settings dialed back so that it only scores the paper instead of cutting all the way through. Once you get it right, it's really cool. The paper can practically fold itself. We used the Dremel Digilab laser cutter for this, which conveniently has a score setting, but the effect should be attainable with any laser cutter. Since every laser cutter is different, we aren't gonna go over how to do the cut itself, but now that you have the concept, you should be able to get there on your own. If you're curious about the specific settings we used on our machine, they're down in the description below. It took us a lot of tries to find the Goldilocks level where the cuts weren't too shallow or too deep, so don't sweat it if it takes you a while. Once you're done laser scoring, just fold the paper along the lines as you normally would in order to get your desired pattern or shape. This feels like a cooking show. The first pattern we decided to try is called Mira Ori, and this pattern is really cool because the folds actually change the mechanical properties of the paper, even though when it's laying flat it's just a bunch of zigzags. We designed our pattern based on research being done at a physics lab in Cornell, and we will link that below. By changing the size and the number of zigzags in the pattern, its mechanical properties get adjusted. The stiffness can also be altered using something called pop-through defects. By pushing one of the vertices through to the other side, the paper becomes stiffer and can't contract as much. But I think the coolest feature of this design is that it gives the paper a negative Poisson's ratio. Zyla, what the heck is that and why do I care? Well, I am so glad you asked. Poisson's ratio is used to measure the degree by which material compresses in the direction transverse to the direction in which it is stretched. Which is basically just saying, when you compress something, it stretches in the other direction. Most materials have a positive Poisson's ratio, so when you stretch them in one direction, the cross-section compresses or shrinks. Think of it this way, when you stretch a rubber band, or in this case a plastic bag, it gets thinner so it has a positive Poisson's ratio. And that's pretty normal, because most materials change in volume more than they resist change in shape. However, this particular design has a negative Poisson's ratio, which means that when you contract the paper in one direction, it will contract in the other direction, and when you expand it in one direction, it will expand in the other direction. Designing with this effect is also called oxetic design and can be anything from single molecules to designs like this. These are really good at shock absorption, so if you take a look at the bottom of your sneaker, you might see an oxetic design out in the wild. Anyway, we're in a rabbit hole, so let's escape and keep going. Now that we know we can use a laser cutter to make cool patterns, we also wanted to see if we could use it to make intricate shapes. So the next thing we tried is best known as a water balloon or a water bomb. Chances are, if you've ever gotten into origami before, you've seen this shape, but we think it's cool because it's currently being used by biomedical researchers to design a new type of heart stint. And I'm gonna try not to gross you guys out too much here, but it would basically be inserted into the blood vessel in a compact form before being actuated by a circuit to allow it to expand to its full size. And although it's yet to be implemented, it could be really beneficial because it could really reduce risk involved with traditional wire mesh heart stent grafts, which, grossness warning, can go badly. In the meantime, there are plenty of other cases of origami-inspired engineering. Let us know some of your favorites down in the comments below. And teachers, check out the lesson plan that goes with this video on our website, linked in the description, because we do that now. And by the way, if you want to see live updates of us burning through paper on our laser cutter in frustration in preparation for videos like this, go give us a follow on Instagram at Beauty and the Bolt. Plus, we post pretty cool other things on there, too. Many thanks to Dremel for sponsoring this video, and to Brooke, one of our amazing summer interns who helped bring this video to life. 